Okay. Um, your introduction and conclusion paragraph. So remember, you're, you should not start this until you are um, done with your uh, body paragraphs. And I'm going to show you a little bit why. But your introduction should have three elements. Your first element is your hook. Your hook is what gets the reader uh, attention, gets the reader to want to read your paper. It should grab their attention. Um, so uh, remember, I get paid by Da Vinci schools to read your papers. So I have to read them in order to earn my salary. So I will read them. But a good hook does help grab the reader's attention because maybe it's trying to get someone other than me to read it who's not getting paid. Um, you want to grab their attention. So some ideas I have is an inspirational or interesting quote. A rhetorical question, it should not be a yes or no question, it should be a question that makes you think. Or an anecdote, which is another word for story. Um, so an in, inspirational or interesting quote could be something like, John Wooden once said, never mistake activity for achievement. Uh, Learn to laugh were the first words from my kindergarten teacher after Ralph Torson spilled paint on my daffodil picture, or I have the best words, President Donald Trump, right? That's some inspirational quotes for us. Some more examples. Um, so we beat on, boats against the current, born back ceaselessly into the past. Uh, those words of Nick Carraway perfectly describe, right? We did start a, start a paper on that. Um, not all who wander are lost, is from Tolkien. Uh, and yes, indeed, every person is so, right? Something to think about. When we love, we always strive to become better than what we are. When we strive to become better than we are, everything around us becomes better too. Agree or not, these words from the alchemist determine. So you see the idea is like put in a quote that gets you thinking. Uh, so rhetorical question examples might be um, what would, kind of honestly what we do for our do now is maybe a little bit more substantive, but what would you do if you could play God for a day? That's exactly what the leaders of the tiny island nation of Guam tried to answer. Setting goals is easy, but achieving them isn't. How are you sabotaging yourself, right? Uh, how can we stop bullying in school? Is the answer we educate the bullies or educate those being bullied? Do we need more supervision on playgrounds or stricter penalties for bullying? Um, so again, the idea with a rhetorical question is it gets you thinking. It should tie to your topic, right? This is this example. It should tie to your topic and get the reader to go, hmm, yeah, hmm. And then, in theory, your paper is going to address this topic. So the claim or the thesis, hopefully you've already done this if you're working on your body paragraphs. So you're just going to type it out. This, you know, now it's the first time. So uh, the one that we, the one that Matt and I did on our sample paper is understanding the Montgomery boy, bus boycott can make one a better end. Boycott can make one a better anti-racist, right? That is our claim or our thesis. A how. A how is a preview of what's to come. So, just to get us in the preview mood, let's show this movie. Oh, show this clip. Did you wash your hands with soap? Did you dry them? Is this all vegetables? Who ordered all vegetables? I did. So, are we going to talk about it? What? The elephant in the room. What elephant? Mom's new job. It's time to make some wrong things right. Help me bring supers back into the sunlight. We need to change people's perceptions about superheroes. And Elastigirl is our best play. Better than me? <laughs>
super, super important that you do not do your intro paragraph until you've written your body paragraphs, because otherwise you will stare at this sentence for hours. It's like that mirror in Harry Potter, uh, the one that you can stay, that shows you what you want, and you stare at it for hours. I think it's kind of how I think about the how sentence in your intro paragraph. If you don't know what you're going to do yet, if you haven't done it yet, then you're just going to stare at it and say, what? How am I going to prove my claim? I don't know. Right? And then you can get stuck on it. So this is why. And it's just like making a preview, right? You can't make a preview until you've made the movie and then you're cutting parts of it. Right? It's the same thing here. So, um, and, you know, when you get into more academic books and you get to college, right, like your introduction will take, like, summaries of each paragraph, right? The author will say, in chapter one, I discuss this. In chapter two, I discuss that. In chapter three, I discuss this. And give quick summaries. That's kind of what you're doing here for your papers. You're just giving a quick, this is what I'm going to talk about in this paper. It's a preview of your paper. So you're not going to type out your body paragraphs here, but you are going to give a preview of what they're going to be about. So this will be accomplished by using and analyzing examples from, and then what are your topic paragraphs? So just look at each of your paragraphs and say, what were they about? Uh, you know, topic one, topic two, topic three, topic four, whatever, you know what I mean? Like, just quick, like, they can almost be like, you know, just quick summaries of what your paragraphs are. So um, if you look at my sample paper, this will be proven, uh, proven is another way of saying accomplished. By showing how it inspired other movements, right? I have a whole paragraph about that. How it was effective in creating change. I have a whole paragraph about that. And how laws can make America a better place. I have a whole paragraph about that. So giving summaries of your paragraphs. So in a multi-paragraph paper like this, you know, you're just going to give a quick summary of each paragraph. If you were to go in and write a book, maybe you're giving summaries of each chapter, okay? So that is all your intro paragraph needs to be. So uh, look on the example on Dreams They Do. And how I do that first paragraph, and that's exactly what I'm expecting you to do here. Now, you put the introduction on top, you have all your body paragraphs. The last thing you do is you write your conclusion paragraph. And this one's super easy as well. You're going to restate your thesis or restate your claim, restate your how, and then give us a closing thought. So, in conclusion, uh, if, if this were what my paper is on, in conclusion, using animals for scientific or consumer testing is immoral. Right? I'm just going to restate it. Um, now, um, in the opening paragraph, you say this will be accomplished. You're going to do the exact opposite now. You're going to say this was accomplished because it's past tense, right? So if this was my paper. is on testing on animals. I would say this was accomplished by showing how humans and animals do not have enough in common to draw a conclusion, addressing cruelty in many of the methods, and displaying alternatives, okay? So um, the idea is, is you're just basically turning the intro paragraph around on its head. So... Uh, you're restating your thesis, you're restating your how. Now, instead of a hook, right, you're not, you don't need to hook them back in anymore. They're almost done. Uh, you should give some kind of closing thought. So here's an example of how this can all work and put together. In conclusion, understanding the Montgomery bus boycott can make one a better anti-racist, not anti-Christ. Goodness, I need to fix that. Um, anti-racist, excuse me. Um, so this is my claim. This was accomplished by showing how it inspired other movements, how it was effective in creating change, and how laws can make America a better place. I'm restating my how. Now, let's give me something to think about as I close out this paper. So, there are numerous laws and policies that need to be changed today, and this can only happen if we organize our communities, think strategically, and have the courage of our convictions. Right? Just give me one. All right, we're done. It doesn't need to be long, but it's like that closing element to a movie. Okay? Like your reasoning or like your analysis, your closing thought should come from your brain. It should be the culmination of all the research and analysis you did throughout the paper. It should show like you understand it and you want me to think deeper about your topic. Okay? Remember when the teacher is grading it is that this is the last thing I'm going to read before I'm filling out your grade. So it should be something that's like, huh, that student's really smart. That student gets it, right? It should be something to make me proud of you. 
spent. So some other examples would be, while others may argue for athletes like Magic Johnson, LeBron James, or Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan's impact on the NBA combined with performance cannot be topped. Perhaps an athlete will best him in the future, but that time has yet to arrive, right? Something like that if I'm writing a paper on why Jordan's the best. Uh, by understanding the cause of civil war as slavery, we are better, able to better understand the deep way in which racism and greed has had an enduring impact on the country. Our hope must be that we as a country continue to move forward and make a better world for everybody. Everyone. Right? So the idea is it's something to think about as we close out. All right. Uh, I'm going to stop recording my video. And...